All right, today is February 14th, 2014, Friday, Valentine's Day. Heading up the Provo Canyon to a small town called Heber, Utah. Pick up a uh, black Chrysler 300M. This is the uh, same canyon that I take to get to my other job. As you guys saw the other day, I uh, did a little bit of video footage on that and uh, was asked by the powers that be to take it down because of a couple issues. One, I showed people's faces and it is a private, exclusive uh, ski resort. And if people do go visit this ski resort for anatomy, you know, we get a lot of uh, people that are in the movie film industry up there and uh, other people that are pretty well known. And so they uh, choose to go to our ski resort uh, over a public ski resort simply to avoid the crowds and the public. And so got a little bit of uh, trouble for that as well as when I went behind the house through the kitchen I showed part of uh, the business that the general public doesn't see even though there was nothing back there other than you know chefs and employees and stuff and still back of the house and I should know better than to show that stuff on the internet so I had to pull the footage down luckily it was the second half of the video and I was able to just cut it off using uh, YouTube's uh, video uh, editing software so I was able to retain the beginning of the video, which was what I wanted to show, picking up that Del Sol. But, uh, you know, it sucks. I, I tried to give them a good plug, and I got a lot of comments from people saying that they felt like uh, there was nothing wrong with that video. But, again, management's management, and the owners of that place uh, chose to ask that uh, I take it down, and I respect that, so I did. And won't be able to show any more such footage like that, uh, unfortunately, because it is a private ski resort. So... Oh well, it is what it is. Uh, for those of you that get, did get to see it before it got taken down, you got a little bit better idea of some of the other stuff I do for a living. For those of you that didn't get to see it, I'm sorry, it's pretty cool. But yeah, we'll, uh, we're heading up here, pick up this uh, vehicle. We've got a couple of discussion things I wanted to go over at the beginning of this video. Uh, first one, uh, the discussion has been started by one of uh, my viewers about the word beanie. I mentioned that I'm going to be selling different uh, paraphernalia online for, uh, you know, t-shirts, hats, whatnot. And one of the items I mentioned is a beanie. And this uh, YouTube viewer mentioned that that uh, is an offensive word to Jewish people uh, because of the type of cap that they wear in their, in their religion. I'm sure there's a lot of words out there that are offensive to a lot of different people. I'm one of those people that there's not a single word out there that offends me because I choose to not be offended by language of any kind. Someone wants to call me white trash or a honky or hillbilly or redneck or any kind of a word that can apply to a white guy living in the United States, uh, it doesn't offend me because I simply know, one, I'm none of those things, and two, it's words. They don't offend me. Cause swear words don't offend me. Uh, you know, I got a couple of uh, sons that live in my home that are uh, half black, and uh, actually they're quarter black because their dad was half black and their mom was white. And so of course we deal with the N word in our house and uh, you know, we, we use it amongst ourselves sometimes when we're using it as a, a, a positive derogatory and we're using it in a funny sense, but we never use it in a negative derogatory and I don't use that word in a negative derogatory because it is offensive to a lot of people and it shows the just a lower mentality and class of uh, personality to use a word like that in public. But at the same time, I understand the meaning behind it, and I, you know, it's just one of those things that you know, if you got good friends that are black, and you, or you know, you see a lot of people that are both black, and they'll use the word amongst themselves. If you ever watch the TV show The Wire, they use that word a lot in that TV show, and I know that there's a lot of people that uh, have commented about how offensive that is, and it's like, you know what? If you choose to be offended by something as simple as words, you know, tones of people's voices coming out of their mouth, then you got a lot deeper issues than just being offended by that word and really need to just take a look at your own personal life because being offended over a word is ridiculous. What Really what you're, you're saying is you're offended over the mannerism of what the person means as they say that word. It's not that you're actually offended by the word itself. So let's get realistic about what we're talking about. But uh, for those of you that are Jewish and might have been offended by the word beanie, I meant nothing by it. So I'll be politically correct and uh, say that now. Another thing I wanted to bring up is... Uh, I've got a friend that constantly flip-flops the meaning of north and south using the words up and down. And we'll say when, when it's talking about coming down from South Salt Lake, south, 
to where I'm at in Utah County will say, well, I'm going to be coming up there. And I will be like, you mean coming down here? And they'll be like, no, coming up there. And, and I've had the discussion many times with this person about the fact that when you look at a map or you hold a compass, north is up and south is down. It's, it's an up-down thing, north-south thing. It's, you know, the only time I would ever think that south, something south of another location was up is if you traveled up a mountain to get to the other location. Then I might say I'm coming up there because I'm coming up a hill or up a mountain. But even so, if it was far enough south, even if I did rise in elevation, I would probably still refer to it as down because of mapping systems. That's just how I am. So I'm posing the question to you guys, is up north and down south? Or if you have a friend that lives south of you, would you say I'm coming up there? So that's my uh, question of the day. I'd like to see comments about the uh, that. I'm pretty certain that the majority of people are probably going to agree with me that up is north and south is down. But uh, there are those out there that have their reasons to believe that coming up there can mean going south or going down there can mean going north. So I'd like to hear from those people especially that, that, that think that way and why and what your reasoning is. It's not a right wrong thing, it's a how you were raised and what you think thing. And I'm just curious to, to get a better insight on my friend's opinion. We'll be on the street phone just a little bit. Uh, it's got a tracking device on it. I've already pinged it. It is sitting at the given address. It's moved twice and gone back. But uh, as of right now, the last time I pinged it, which was just before coming up the canyon, it was sitting at home. Looks like our vehicle moved almost to the house. I pinged it. Now it's gone south Main Street. Is that the Walmart? That looks like it's in the Walmart parking lot. We were almost to the address. I pinged it just before when I came out of the canyon. It was still at the house. And then now I just pinged it again to make sure it was at the house as I was a few blocks away. And it's moved. <laughs> funny how you never realize without GPS tracking devices how often in the past I've gone and when I rolled up on an address and the vehicle wasn't there I realistically could have missed it by just seconds and every time I get these GPS ones it kind of reaffirms for me that very thing because I see that I just you know it was just at the house and five minutes later it's now at Walmart and I was almost to the house I actually just drove by Walmart so quite often and we're going into a neighborhood it's one of the reasons it's one of my standard operating procedures to check gas station parking lots eating establishments places that banks that you know places that people frequently go to around the place where they live to uh, do their shopping and run to get their smokes and go to get a soda and run to Walmart to do some shopping looks like the vehicle is pulled up right in front I hope they're not dropping someone off for work uh, it's a couple parking spots in, so it looks like they've parked in a parking stall. One, two, three, three stalls over. So we're going to come from the uh, west side in because of the way this parking lot's laid out. I actually got another repo out of this parking lot. There was this total skip, and I came up here and I was just doing some shopping and parked in a handicapped spot right at the front was this. Uh, expedition we've been looking for. Let's see if we got a plate on this black 300M Charlie 264. This is going to be front wheel drive and it's most likely going to be pulled into the spot it's parked in. So we're going to have to pick it up from the rear and there it is right over there. Oh man, the spot next to it was empty for a second. That would have helped. Do what we gotta do. Thank you. 
This is that dolly that was frozen the other day. As you can see, there's nothing wrong with it. It was just ice build up from the car wash. I got a lot of comments about different solutions, carrying a little mini torch all the way from, to, from that to uh, holding the dolly up behind the uh, exhaust. A couple good ideas that could work in a situation like that to get the uh, mechanism unfrozen while in a pinch. Slow roll this out. And get out of the way of traffic. This parking lot's brand new, so it's totally smooth. So I'm going to take advantage of that and pull it down here just a little bit away from the door. Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, you typically don't want to go super far on Gojex. But a parking like, lot like this where it's like driving on glass, it's not a big deal. Every repo is different, every situation is different. And how we use the tools can be adjusted according to environmental parameters. So we just made that car disappear. Now I can drop it over here around the corner out of sight and grab it from the nose. And I'll probably go back by the front just to see if there's tr somebody out there looking at an empty spot, tripping out. Let's see if we can't get keys out of them. The funny thing about the finance company that sent over this repo is they call Every single person that they have us repo, they call them that morning and warn them that if they don't call immediately, they're going to be up for repo. So that's why, knowing that, I, I stall out a little bit and I take my time and wait. A couple hours after the orders come over, inevitably he'll call and cancel at least one or two of them within the first couple hours because people get a clue and so this person was warned this morning to get this handled or this would be the results so there's no reason whatsoever for them to be surprised when they come out and see this car missing spot here so I got to raise my arm up high enough to clear the curb behind me so I can turn around without doing a three-point turn what I did right there was sucked in the arm called resetting the cross. You basically suck it in and it straightens it out. If it's tilted like this or like this, you want to be able to get a straight shot underneath the car you're picking up. Raise it just high enough to where I can see the light over the lift and between the two rear tires. the air compressor for the air ride bags 
or Firestone brand. I call them Air Ride because I'm used to it, but Firestone's the brand. Air Ride is the mechanics for the electronics and the uh, compressor. Actually, not Air Ride, Air Lift. I think Air Ride might be another third brand I know of from. days gone by. You see I got the other cover for the dollies. These are nice. You get all kinds of road debris over, all over them and stuff and it just shows you how much of that debris we're keeping off the dollies and out of the joints and stuff and let it get all over the bags and they're machine washable. And I'm, These are a prototype that I'm using to work all the bugs out of to make sure that they can handle the abuse. The reason I say that is because this first one, which I've had on for a week now, already got a rip in it from whipping in the air. Wind right there, I got a hole. So what I'm gonna have to do is go back and I'm gonna have them do a double seam on these things. And then also, because they fill up like balloons with air as I'm going down the freeway, you can see where they put these little brass D-rings in to keep them secured onto the lift. I'm gonna have them put a couple of those. I'm gonna have to put one in each corner and what that's going to do is it's going to allow air to, to blow out of them. A lot of times you'll see street signs in areas that are very windy where they drill holes in the street signs to keep them from whipping in the wind really bad. It allows the wind to pass through the sign and slip, break, brings down the amount of vibration and wear and tear on the sign and the joints because you keep going like this to anything, eventually it's going to break. So I'm going to have them double seam them and then put air holes to allow them to breathe and I bet you that's going to be enough. I like them though like them a lot. You can see all the debris and road hash on them. Alright. Let's go see if this lady's out in the parking lot freaking out yet. My guess is she's just barely arrived. She's got at least 20 to 25 minutes of shopping time plus another 10 minutes of checkout time. Get the airbags bumped up to 80. Yeah, they're already at 80. Mexican lady right there. There's a baby car seat in the car, so that lady doesn't have a baby, so I'm guessing that's not her. Guys coming out of Walmart with balloons and a plant. Yeah, it's Valentine's. Unfortunately, my uh, sweetheart's not well enough to even get out of bed, and let alone go do something fun. So I get to bring Valentine's to her. I got something planned for her. Valentine's in bed. It is what it is this year. Valentine's last year, we didn't even know about the cancer yet. Coming up on the one year mark, March 1st would be a year since we found out the bad news. If you're uh, at risk for a colon cancer or polyps, I mean, it doesn't matter what age you are, get a colonoscopy. If you're over 50, get one for sure. They catch it early, it's like breast cancer. It's totally curable in stage one, or at the polyp stage, totally curable does no, no after effects. They cut the polyp out, you go home. Nothing. No chemo, no treatment, no medicine. Alright, this next one I was going to serve the guy, but the finance company said if the car's out front, go ahead and uh, repossess it. We got special instructions on what they want us to do. They want us to hook it, lift it in the air, and if he comes out, see if he's either gives us a key and acts like he knew he were, we were coming or he's like no I want to make a payment right now and avoid repossession then they want us to call and put him on the phone and see if we can get a credit card number it's sitting right there a little silver car right in front of that Lincoln Navigator claims it has a blown engine so he may just be like here's the key 
have a good life. So we're looking for any kind of indicators that the vehicle's been sitting here for a length of time. Not seeing any cobwebs or anything on the wheels. No marks on the road other than there's a very prominent wet spot where the tire's been. That's usually an indication that it's been there for a little bit, but not a super long time. E-brakes on, take that off. Make sure there's not a key just laying in here. Don't see one. That if the car was here to hold off on serving him, repo first. They have to liquidate the uh, collateral first and then they have to adjust the amount they're suing for with the difference. So, You the guy. Uh, anything you guys need to get out of this car, we're picking it up for the finance company. Yeah. Anything you want? Any personal items in it you need? I don't think so. My son was riding, so I don't think so. Do you guys have a key for it? It's there. Oh, it is? I looked yeah, in, in the you, middle console. In the console. The one place I didn't look. Yeah, the front. front. There in the middle. Okay, in the middle. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Center console. Center console where? Oh. No battery. So my guess is the blown engine story is true. His son drove it until it didn't run anymore. Go through the high school parking lot here. Pop back out on Center Street. Work our way back that way. We'll pull over up here real quick and throw some lights on it. It's getting dark. Keeps them from blowing off. Had them put a little bit of extra drawstring on there. Just slide this down like that. Now they can't blow off. nice because whenever I stop to get fuel I always have to reach over my dollies to get to the fuel door and I always end up getting grease on the inside of my arm I don't have to deal with that anymore 
these covers on here. Cinch down nice and tight there. There. Fish this through the eyelet. Underneath the mounting bar. Back to this eyelet. Added a bit of safety. Just like that. Now the wind can blow through that mesh part right there. It shouldn't fill up with quite so much air. I think those are gonna work out nicely. So yeah, if you're interested in the set, I'm taking pre-orders right now. Got the price set at 180 bucks for a pair right now. As soon as I can get them done in bulk, start ordering them 20 pair at a time, I can get the price down a little bit further than that. But initially, I'm going to take a pre-order sales at 180 a pair. And if you're interested in a pair of them, or you want to talk your boss into getting a couple sets of them, shoot me an email, and uh, or contact me over YouTube, and I'll start a list. And as soon as I've got enough pre-orders, I'll put in my first batch order, and then from there we'll see if we can't get the price of these things down. One of a kind, no one else makes them yet, except for us.